Hello everyone, today we'll be reviewing the major steps of transcription and translation in protein synthesis, as well as the basics of DNA and RNA. Let's start with the cell here. Within the cell, you will find chromosomes, and within the chromosomes, you will find DNA. Within the DNA, you will find genes, and within each gene, you will find nucleotides. We're going to focus in on these nucleotides because they play a crucial role in protein synthesis. Nucleotides are the monomers of nucleic acids. And remember, the nucleic acids are referring to DNA and RNA. Nucleotide's job is to code for specific amino acids. And remember, amino acids are the monomer of proteins. In other words, amino acids are what proteins are made of. You can think of it like this. Nucleotides make the amino acids, and amino acids make the proteins. Nucleotides are made of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. The nitrogenous bases in DNA are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Adenine and thymine pair up, as do guanine and cytosine. These pairs are referred to as a base pair. The nitrogenous bases in RNA are the same with one exception. We have adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. Adenine and uracil pair up, as do guanine and cytosine. So taking a look at the bases in DNA and RNA side by side, we can see that the only difference is DNA has thymine and RNA has uracil. I can't stress how important this is to remember, thymine is only found in DNA and uracil is only found in RNA. And remember, these nitrogenous bases we're talking about fit in this nucleotide structure. Okay, let's take a look at the structure of a DNA molecule. Here we see the nucleotide that is the monomer of DNA and RNA, meaning it makes up the structure of DNA and RNA. DNA has a double strand that we refer to as a double helix. Both strands run anti-parallel to each other, and this just means that they go in opposite directions. The outside of the strand is made of phosphates, the middle is made of the sugar, and the inside of the double helix is where you can find the nitrogenous base pairs. We have a pair because two nucleotides meet in the middle, so hence a pair. Let's compare the DNA structure to the RNA structure, and I'll point out all of the major differences you need to know. As I mentioned, the DNA structure is made of a double strand we refer to as a double helix, and the RNA is made of a single strand. DNA has the nucleotide thymine, while RNA has the nucleotide uracil. DNA uses the sugar deoxyribose, hence the name deoxyribonucleic acid, which is what DNA stands for. And RNA uses ribose, which is why RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. The function of DNA is to aid in gene expression, replication, and transportation. RNA has many functions, but to basically sum them all up, RNA assists DNA. So how do DNA and RNA work together? What's the whole purpose of DNA and RNA? DNA and RNA work together in a process called protein synthesis. In other words, they work together to make proteins. Before getting into the steps of protein synthesis, those being transcription and translation, let's go over the different types of RNA you're going to see. You will see three different types of RNA in protein synthesis, rRNA, mRNA, and tRNA. rRNA is ribosomal RNA, and the name gives it a huge hint to its function. Our RNA's main function is to create the structure of the ribosome. mRNA is the messenger RNA. Its main job is to transport the DNA information or message from inside the nucleus to the ribosome. tRNA is the transfer RNA. Its main function is to decode the nucleotide sequence and create the appropriate amino acid for the code. Basically, it makes amino acids using the codes on mRNA. As I mentioned, there are two major steps in protein synthesis, transcription and translation. Basically, transcription is where DNA makes mRNA, and translation is where mRNA makes proteins. Let's start at the beginning. DNA is in the nucleus and is unable to leave the nucleus, but it somehow needs to find a way to send its DNA information to the ribosome so it can make proteins. In comes mRNA. 
mRNA comes along to help by taking a copy of DNA's information and transporting it to the ribosome. Hence why mRNA is the messenger. It's sending the DNA message. Here's our DNA that we find in the nucleus. And here is our mRNA. The major process of transcription begins with the enzyme RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase connects complementary DNA bases to RNA bases. So here is our DNA and here is our RNA polymerase enzyme. RNA polymerase enzyme is going to do two major things here. One, it will unzip the two strands of DNA and two, it will code and transfer DNA nucleotide bases to the appropriate RNA nucleotide bases. Here we can see the polymerase enzyme unzipping the DNA. As it unzips, it is also creating the mRNA. So let's take a close look at how mRNA is actually being made here. The RNA polymerase only uses one strand of DNA to code. That strand is referred to as the template strand and it's also called the anti-sense strand. So this is our template strand of DNA. Remember, the template strand of DNA has nucleotide bases. Here we have C representing cytosine. RNA polymerase is going to ask itself, hmm, what nucleotide base pairs with cytosine in RNA? Guanine pairs with cytosine in RNA. So once polymerase enzyme has figured out the complementary bases, it will make them. So it's going to go ahead and make guanine here. By the way, if you didn't get a chance to write the base pairs down, here they are for reference. It's absolutely mandatory that you remember and memorize these base pairs. Okay, so next on the DNA template strand, we have G representing guanine. Polymerase is going to ask itself, what nucleotide base pairs with guanine in RNA? Cytosine does. So it's going to make a cytosine base. Next we have thymine. What nucleotide base pairs with thymine in RNA? Adenine. Lastly, we have adenine on the DNA template strand. What nucleotide base pairs with adenine on RNA? Uracil. This is how RNA polymerase enzyme makes mRNA out of DNA. So this is our new mRNA strand. And as you can see here, this is where it comes out of the polymerase enzyme. Once mRNA is made, it transports the DNA message to the ribosomes. And remember, that message is the nucleotide sequence it coded from the DNA template strand. I just want to emphasize the big picture here regarding location. Transcription happens inside of the nucleus of the cell. After mRNA is made, it travels to the ribosomes. This is a ribosome. You can find the ribosome on the endoplasmic reticulum. You can also find the ribosomes freely in the cytoplasm. However, you find protein synthesis more commonly in the ribosomes that are on the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so mRNA has clearly moved from the nucleus of the cell to the ribosomes of the cell. Here is where translation begins. Translation happens in the ribosomes of the cell. Codons on mRNA code for amino acids. These amino acids make proteins. Remember, amino acids are the monomers of proteins. Codon refers to three bases in a row on the mRNA strand. Each codon codes for a specific amino acid. So let's take a close look at this process. Here is our ribosome. Our ribosome is much like a manufacturing plant because proteins are made here. By the way, I haven't introduced our RNA. This is our RNA. Its main function is to make the structure of the ribosomes. Ribosomes are made of proteins and our RNA. Hence the name ribosomal RNA mRNA starts the translation process by entering into the ribosomes at one end and out of the other end comes out the finished product, the amino acids. Looking at our mRNA, we can clearly see the codon, which is going to have a big role here now as we take a magnified look at what happens within the ribosome. Okay, so here we are within the ribosome. Remember, our mRNA is going into the ribosome. So here's our mRNA strand inside of the ribosome. 
The mRNA has nitrogenous bases that are organized into codons. Every three bases are equal to one codon. And remember, each codon translates to a specific amino acid. This process is all possible because of tRNA, the transfer RNA. Transfer RNA comes in and sits on each codon one by one and translates it into an amino acid. For example, here the tRNA will ask itself, what amino acid does AUG code for? Ah yes, methionine. So it will pop out a methionine amino acid on the other end. One end of the tRNA reads the codes and the other end pops out amino acids. So next it reads the code GUC. It's going to ask itself, what does GUC code for? Ah yes, valine. So it's going to make a valine amino acid. The tRNA will go one by one through each code until it hits a stop codon. This stop codon simulates the tRNA to release the amino acid chain and stop coding. And remember, an amino acid chain is equal to a protein. Okay, so let's take a step back and look at the big picture again. We've seen exactly what happens inside of the ribosome. We know the result is an amino acid chain leaving the ribosome that will eventually become a protein. And we know it was all created with the help of tRNA and of course mRNA. Remember, rRNA basically just makes the structure of the ribosome. That's its function. To summarize, transcription and translation are the steps of protein synthesis, and both DNA and RNA play crucial roles in protein synthesis. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you learned something new, and until next time.